What's up, beautiful people? It's your homegirl, my shameless olive in Sweden. Sveria, we are out here. Thank you so much for the love and support on my last video. If you have missed me, I do have a channel with my husband. You can click over here when it pops up. And I wanted to kind of like update you without it just being a boring talking head video. So on the weekend, we got these little old strawberry crate baskets. I bought some flowers and I figured we could put little flowers there. I've been doing lots of planting. This year I actually planted flowers. I'll give you a little demo. Isn't she so beautiful? But as you can see, I put it in a big old pot. Same with this. A little butterfly. Oops, sorry buddy. Flowey. And they're all still waiting, like they're, they're gonna bloom. There's so many. So instead of a get ready with me, I thought, how about a pot flowers with pregnant Maya? <laughs> but yeah, if you watch my previous video, I was just entering my third trimester. I wasn't in the thick of it. I'm in the thick of it. And this baby, which I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, None of us know, um, it's a surprise. But everyone was saying, it's a boy, it's a boy, it's a boy. So I was like, oh, maybe it's a boy. Max is like, surely you must know. No, I don't have any idea at all. <laughs> Just, it's there. <laughs> and then um, a few nights ago, I was trying to sleep. It was, I could not fall asleep. It was taking me forever because the baby was just moving so much. And I have this app that says the baby is sleeping 95% of the time. Lies. <laughs> the baby was not sleeping 95% of the time. It doesn't. Um, so it's just moving, moving, moving. It was like I had a pillow fight with myself because I'm trying to position the pillows to be more comfortable. I finally fell asleep. But the next morning, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, yo, this baby has no chill. Like, no chill at all. And when I said that, I was like, <gasps> Is it me? Am I birthing myself? Is you female? <laughs> now I'm doing the waddle, the pregnant waddle walk. Now I, I beat myself up. I'm like, Maya, stop walking like a pregnant woman. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> this is very cute, right? <laughs> um, what else am I? discovering i think i'm all tapped out on the books but i think i am i just want to finish this one book that i talked about in my previous video giving birth with no fear clearly <laughs> i'm not reading like that these days <laughs> i think it's great for any woman who wants to give birth or not is curious about the whole process is thinking about it there's one thing i kind of wish in silly sex education class i wish they talked about this stuff like, I didn't learn nothing in that class. I can hear Max. Um, oh, oh filthy, I'm sorry. filming. I was saying hi, I was talking to the neighbor. Yeah, I heard you. Let's go for a swim, Maya. <laughs> it's so hot. Max, are you going for a swim now? I think so. It's so hot. It is hot. I'm going to go without you. Yeah, go. I cannot fill you in. So I've met my entire birthing team, which is a village. It takes a village to raise a baby. That is not a joke, okay? I feel so, so freaking blessed and grateful. So my midwife, Renee, who's gonna be delivering the baby, we finally met her, myself, Max, my doula, Frida, and um, another midwife, a senior midwife in case just in case I have to go to the hospital. Um, we all met in the city and it was such good vibes. It was really, really good vibes. I was very anxious in the beginning, uh, mainly because they move differently out here in Sweden. Like I, my expectation was more contact, but that's not the case. Sorry for the sounds. My neighbor is plowing. He's plowing the earth. <laughs> Hopefully you he can't hear it. So I met them, everything feels good, and 
I also still had my online uh, kind of coaching with another midwife, Sapita. She's, she's the truth. If you are based in Sweden um, or any other European, Scandinavian, Nordic countries, I highly recommend her for like online, if you just don't know nothing. <laughs> You don't know what you don't know. And when you start learning, you're like, what? Like, I could share, some, okay, like some of the things I learned in this whole process I did not know, nor was I aware of, was, um, like for example, placenta. What do you want to do with your placenta? In the hospital, you don't even know it's an option. I mean, for the average pregnant woman or mom who I've met, it's just like, what do you mean, Roy? One done with the placenta. You can either turn it into capsules um, because of the nutritional content in it. You can you can turn it into uh, smoothies, like you can freeze it and put it in a morning smoothie. <laughs> or you can do lotus birth. I was looking into a lotus birth because I was like, oh, that's so cute. They look like little flowers, like they're little potted flowers. When I thought about it, I was just like. Nah! <laughs> Mainly because your baby is attached to the biblical cord and the placenta is in like a pot of dried rose petals, salts. It's just like a good old concoction of, of things. And I'm like, but what if I need to breastfeed and that cord is in the way? I can't. I cannot. <laughs> so I thought I was going to do the whole <laughs> lotus birth. Max is like, I could tell he did not want that. And now I'm, I'm, the plan is a delayed cord clamping. And by delayed, not a few minutes, but a few hours. So I'm going to wait until um, the color turns clear and um, cut it then. But the placenta, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But you can eat it. You can do all these things with it. Or... Actually, Max's sister, who's a nurse, she had a good idea, which is um, planting it. I know people plant trees, but like, I could totally compost that. <laughs> I could compost that ish in next spring's harvest. <laughs> um, so I think I might do what I was thinking of doing. I'm gonna try it. It kind of grosses me out, but I'm gonna try like having like a smoothie Trying it in a smoothie, I don't know if I'm gonna like the taste of that, but trying it in a smoothie and then the rest I'll, I will compost uh, for the next planting. Cause you still get the nutritional contents, but in a, not in the flour, I'm gonna put it in vegetables. Shake you. Um, what other things have I learned? Oh! Okay, even if you are planning on having a hospital birth, you can have like a playlist request, <laughs> a hospital letter. And by law, apparently, um, it, it has to be noted. So I don't know the exact specifics, but try not to have like a long hospital letter. Okay. P.S. Side note, I live on the countryside and it's no cars ever. There has been so many cars. <laughs> I think it's because every Swede is on semester, aka holiday, and they're all driving out here to, to live in their summer homes, which we get to live year round, which is pretty dope. If anything, we're going to do the inverse, like Max and I need to go to the city to get some baby stuff and then come back here. <laughs> Okay, but anyways, what was I talking about? Um, oh, hospital letter. Yes, Bundle of Joy. I think that's her YouTube channel. She has an awesome channel. She's a midwife. She's a nurse. But she has great information for all my pregnant women out there. And services for those of you in the U.S., Canada. She had recommended keeping it to one page. My midwife recommended to keeping it to like five bullet points. Like nothing complicated because then people can get like who do you think you are but legally they have to put this on a chart Ugh. patient chart so you can make requests like 
delayed cord clamping and you can um, specify a time because delay to some people might mean three minutes, five minutes. And I'm like, no, I want my baby to get all those nutrients. So you're going to cut that two hours from now, which is, I don't know about in Canada, but in Sweden, that's when they weigh the baby. So the only time the placenta is in the way is if you're trying to weigh it. So that's more than enough time for all the stem cells and goodies to get to the baby. So you can make requests like that. Uh, what else can you make requests on? Uh, do you want Pitocin? Do you want painkillers? Yeah, like Pitocin, do you want to be induced? Uh, do you want, do you want a vacuum? All these extra things and I think pain management. Again, watch this video by I think Bundle of Birth or Bundle of Joy. But she gets, she goes in on the specifics. And Pitocin, y'all do your research on Pitocin because for some, it is okay and for others it is not either you or your baby can have a reaction to that ish and then it becomes a series of interventions and it's not a good look you can go into emergency c-section because your baby's heart rate drops um, because they're having a reaction to the pitocin all these things or you could be completely fine so that hospital letter watch that video um, and I like what my midwife said, which is keeping it short and sweet to the point. So on my hospital letter, I have, um, I, I open with who I am and whatever, but I don't want things offered unless I request. I will make a request because if you're going to offer me, you know, an epidural and all these things, I'll more than likely say yes if I'm suffering. But, um, if I'm not offered it, I will ask. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what else did I learn on this whole journey of pregnancy? Labor. You can labor at home. So I do highly recommend women at least understand the process of what is happening to your body while you're going into labor. Because you don't have to go to the hospital ASAP. You are probably going to labor for hours. And not all of you, but some of you will labor for hours. And... The less time you're in the hospital, the less likely there'll be interventions. So if you are a healthy uh, woman, you can labor at home for as long as you need to. Because if you're not dilated enough, so you have to go from like 0 to 10 centimeters. If you're not dilated, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the hospital. And depending who's working that shift, they may want out. They may... They may have a dinner to catch, they, and they may just want to like help speed things along. And it's, that's one of the things. Or they might think like, oh, you know, birth isn't supposed to take this long, so let's, let's speed it up now. So there's that. Uh, but looking into the process of what happens when you're laboring will help you understand when's a good time to go to the hospital. The more time you spend in the hospital, the more likely there will be interventions which could lead to complications. What else have I learned? You can labor at home. Um, energy. Let me tell you, ladies, if you ain't already aware, be mindful of the energy you allow into your, your zone, whether it's People, television, social media, I cannot get over the fact that some mothers have been going through this pandemic and glued to the telly, glued to social media, and fearful for their life, and you're pregnant! Um, you are so open and receptive that you don't need that. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Tune it off, <laughs> tune it out, and just focus on you and yours. Like, um, if it doesn't make you feel good, if it doesn't make you feel blissful, if it doesn't make you feel joyful, you and your child don't need that. So, um, that's just some, like, to me, common sense. But, like, I see mothers that are, like, sending me all this stuff, and I'm like, girl, what is you doing? And don't send it to me. Now it's gotten, gotten to the point because people feel the need to 
keep me posted on what is going on in the world. And I'm like, I have to ask them, what is this? Because if it's negativity, please don't send it my way. And that's something I've, I've had to come to terms with because I got caught off guard a few times. Even on people's stories, like they'd be posting stuff and I'm like, whoa, not for me and my baby. You know, it's so funny when I, I didn't know I was pregnant, but I couldn't watch horror movies or like gory shows anymore. Um, and now I know why. It was because I was pregnant. I didn't even know. Like, I love me a sci-fi show or even movie. Um, but sci-fi has a lot of violence. And for some reason, I just, I can't. I personally can't do it. <laughs> Shake you. Oh, the fourth trimester. There's a book on it. I tried to read it. I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. Not for me. But just being aware of uh, the help you're going to need after. And if you don't have that much help, like my situation, I won't have like familiar help. Um, I'm just trying to like wrap my brain around, okay, I'm going to need like these underwears these pads this i need food we gotta freeze food max we gotta um hopefully if we have visitors coming i'm gonna have to have like some sort of website disclaimer or something that says you cannot come unless you are bringing food or doing a chore around the house because i'm not hosting for 40 days you are the gifts i will accept <laughs> Our cooked meals, uh, dishes, <laughs> vacuuming, <laughs> and laundry. Oops, sorry. The fourth trimester, yo. We can spend so much time on worrying about the laboring part that you're, you're like, what's going to happen after? The whole breastfeeding thing. Oh my god. I just started down that hole and I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, and, and it actually helps. I, I haven't... I'm going to have an, another one-on-one -on -one with my midwife. But the first skin-to-skin -skin contact is crucial. Like, if you can bond with your baby, like, out the womb, because your breast milk secretes a scent that's familiar or similar to the amniotic fluid, and the baby will latch on it quickly, you're going to have an easier time breastfeeding. Um, but everyone has a different circumstance. But just good to know, like... This is going to be interesting because I'm saying all this stuff. Let's see how it plays out after the fact. But what happens when, when you're actually in it? These are, these are things I'm just reading about. I don't know anything about it yet. But how am I doing? You ask? Uh, it's so... It's been so hard. Like, I, I've already said this. To go from extreme conditions of just traveling non-stop to make it home and I'm home in Sweden and some people ask like why didn't you just stay in Canada to give birth yeah I could have but I don't own a home there I could rent but then I I own this home with Max and it's fully paid off there's no mortgage there's no rent so it's also my home <laughs> like I have my bed here I have like my kitchen, everything, everything is here. So that was kind of the trade-off. And I remember Max asking me, like, if you could do it over again, would you want to stay in Canada? Because I was, I was so, like, I was so stressed out of the culture shock, right? And he's like, would you want to go back home? I'm like, no. <laughs> yes, my family's there, but what home? Where is my home? I'm homeless. <laughs> no, I have a home here in Sweden. It's just very, very different. So that has been the, the hardest part. Um, what's kept me on my feet, as, as you know, is the this stuff. Like, I'm sitting down to do this. This is very, like, easy work. But I'm normally bent over, like, gardening, taking care of the zucchinis, the squash, the greenhouse, mowing the lawn. Something. Laundry. Laundry isn't complicated, but, you know, you got to take the clothes out dry it it's just it's a lot and if you're doing a DIY project and you're not close to stores you have to like plan it you gotta get the car get the cargo drive each way just it's a lot it's a lot and it's been a lot on both of us Max and I 
But all of that said, I'm like, yo, baby, you freaking lucked out, yo. You are freaking getting the best of the best. Like, what electromagnetic fields? The only one we have is from our internet, which I was making a point to turn off at night. And if I don't, I have an EMF blanket. Again, Max laughs at all these things that I'm doing. I'm like, I don't care. This baby is a supernova, okay? I'm the Stargate. I am birthing something sacred and powerful. So, yeah, just I am happy with this decision to be here in nature with not a whole lot of anything. I mean, I don't know where these cars and motorcycles are coming from. <laughs> They're all on holiday, but they get to eat. Like we don't eat all the food we grow. Like, but by the time the baby's here, the the carrots and the beets and the squash will all be ready. So this child gets like the best of the best. Clean air, fresh water. What? What? I got water from the ground, yo. Like it's so weird because for the longest time I was drinking from a Brita filter. And even out here, I was drinking from a Brita filter. And uh, Max's friend is like, why are you drinking from a filter? Isn't the water coming from the, a well? And I'm like, you're right. I lived in cities my whole life and I can smell the chlorine. I can smell the chemicals in it. And so I was like, why am I doing this? It's just habit. And so I just drank it. It was so weird to just like run the tap and like pour it into a jug and drink it. I'm like, it's so good. It's like sweet. I call it sweet water. Sweet water. Come here with your fine data. And we get to go like strawberry picking, mushroom picking. Ugh, this child looked out. You got the lotto, kid. <laughs> but yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> living the dream is not easy. It is work. And maybe not the dream, but living with more self-sustainability more self-reliant yes it's more freedom but with more freedom comes more responsibility and so it just depends on the spectrum of where you want to be I don't think I could do this for a lifetime I don't know <laughs> like right now I'm like no I'm already shit Max <laughs> me and Max are like let's go but like go back back to the matrix back over there I don't know yo so I'm just like, no, we got to stay put. We got to like make this work. And you know, as every project becomes completed, like this sun deck has been like forever. The bedroom is coming along. But as each one gets completed, we're just like home. It's cozy. It's nice. But it's also a lot of work. <laughs> changing the tire to your car, changing the oil. But these are like practical adult adulting life skills like how to change the oil on a car how to change a tire like sometimes i think and i'm like we know nothing <laughs> oh my god like the western world yo i mean kudos to everyone who knows how to like do those things but this year this past few years have brought about um responsibility and growth and it it's hard and we can cry about it because we do but it's necessary adulting and there's levels to this there's levels um it just depends on how how much you're doing and i had friends who are like why don't you like hire a cleaner hire a cleaner where where who am i hiring i'm on the countryside people out here they're not trying to hustle they're just trying to chill <laughs> I can't hire nobody, even if I wanted to. And I want to. I want to hire someone. And there's no one to hire. So that just makes it like, ooh. If I were to buy again, what would I do? I'd probably, I don't know. I, I kind of want to tough it out here for, I'm aiming for five years. And then go from there. Um, first five years of this child's life yo your mama's gonna be on your case I've officially made a beautiful mess <laughs> I hope this video is okay <laughs> it's like I don't know 
about y'all, but has this, the last couple years been like a, a huge reckoning, like a wake up call? For me, the, the call was like, learn something, <laughs> like learn a life skill. For some reason, I was called to self sustainability uh, and ownership. It's a lot of work, like freedom. The more freedom you want, the more responsibility it's going to take. Like, I want to have a home birth. And because of that, I can't just wing it because <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> so I have to take ownership and responsibility and understand what is going through my body. And it's, it's work. And I, I don't expect the average person to have this kind of... Um, privilege of time because it's also time you, you'd have to have the access to time I wish they would honestly teach this in school I wish doctors and nurses learned this stuff like how women in the wild give birth like how do normal people with no complications give birth I think hospitals are great if there is something you have an issue with like emergencies pregnancy is not a labor is not an emergency it's it is a part of life it's not supposed to be traumatic and yet it is like yeah like even you know wanting to grow your own food you know like god forbid something were to happen and like the food chain is disrupted and like the supermarkets like how does one feed them themselves and their family and now that I've been doing it out here for like a few months, <laughs> Max and I are both like over it. <laughs> but it's good. It's a good skill to have. But it's just like, we get it. It's work. <laughs> like knowing that you can't be putting toxins in the soil. Like everyone's talking about climate change. And I'm just like, okay, this is for the corporations, right? <laughs> Because it's the corporations who need some checking. And it's interesting that the corporations who have these subsidiaries of like nonprofit organizations are pushing this. And I'm like, but you're the ones who are dumping millions of tons of pollution into the oceans and the soil and the air. Like, what do you want me to do? I got a Prius. <laughs> I finally got a Prius. <laughs> what more do you want from me? So yeah, that's like the big... That's what I wanted. Respon hey! I wanted responsibility. No, I wanted freedom. <laughs> and with freedom comes responsibility. Ta-da! My hands are dirty. I have made this video longer than it needs to be. I hope that this was calming for some, <laughs> informative for others. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming. I hope it wasn't too Maya brain. I wouldn't even blame it on the pregnancy or mom brain. That's a Maya brain. Um, but yeah, until next time, remember to do you, be you, stay true, boo. Be shameless. <laughs>